Last month, the Serpentid ships have received a new Robons, which is, I believe, the first time ever in the history of the game where a pirate faction nation has received a new Robons. I know that the Rattlesnake's Robons has been tweaked, but uh, I don't think that there has been uh, something like this at all up until now. So, going to be interesting to see if they add more Robons to the other faction ships. Now, today I'll be taking a look at the Vindicator, basically the Daredevil Vindicator and the Vigilant have all received a plus 25% status wafer or basically a 25% resistance bonus on slowdown. Which is very interesting to the... which is very interesting because at the moment the only other ships that have the same bonus are versatile solo ships and super carriers. Now, did the... did the Serpentine ships require to have a slowdown resistance? Well, it kind of makes sense since they already have a bonus on web first, they have the strongest webs in the game. So it kind of makes sense that they have some resistance to the technology that they are very good at. So I find that a I find that very interesting. Uh, but I've heard from my friends that now the Daredevil and Vigilant are able to speed tank a Vindicator on zero. So you get some drawbacks with the with this new Robos. Twenty five percent isn't a small number, it's actually quite significant and it's going to have an impact, it's definitely going to have an impact. Now, the DPS on the Vindicator has also been improved since the railguns have been buffed in the in the last update and the, the range is also uh, increased slightly, they have slightly more range but overall the DPS output and the performance should be better than it used to be. It still has the same bonus on the disruptors and 91.5% flight velocity adjustment, basically 91.5% slowdown per web. Which does affect and uh, does affect all ships, but I guess the bandit ships will have a lower effect when when webbed. 5580.06 DPS. This is kind of the PvP build that I would use on a Vindicator since it should have pretty good DPS, doesn't really need a lot of tank, it already has some decent tank by default with a build like this. Now let me quickly show you the maximum DPS output on this thing. The nanocore is, I believe, the the Dark Hell nanocore, I don't know. I, I equipped the nanocore but for some reason it was gold by default and it doesn't let me change it, so unfortunately I'll just have to be I'll just have to stick with ship like this. But the nano core isn't upgraded, it's basically like only the default attribute and nothing else. That's just how how I do. I've always done like that and uh I haven't changed anything else. I never really upgrade any nano core when I'm testing out ships. Since, you know, that's not really required, not really necessary to do. Although this this ship looks good, I'll say that. 1.2 km per second, it's actually not that slow, it's a fairly decent speed. I'm pretty happy with the with the speed on the Vindicator and this is the these are the rigs that I have equipped. Burst tirators and some capacitor rigs and auxiliary thrusters. Which you know means that you can make the ship even faster if you feel like it. The Serpent ships aren't that slow actually. They're decently fast and overall pretty happy with their uh, with their maneuverability and flight velocity. 250,000 hit points, 68, 58, 59, and 42 percent armor resistance should be decent enough against most targets, and you have the damage control on top of it, so you can always use that if necessary. 79,000 hit points, 89, 86, 86, and 81 percent. Basically, you have the same amount of hit points as my Tempest Navy, uh, which is full brick. So a build like this should technically last for quite a while. I'm doing those. 13 seconds of the damage control being active, which honestly is more than enough since you will be You will usually usually will be killing targets uh, very quickly uh, unless uh, they are a bait only a Trunk bait can really be a threat to a To a full-on DPS build anything else is not really much of a problem the average build will just get deleted in a very short amount of time, but a very chunky ship, a very very chunky ship, 
is not going to uh, be affected a lot by a full-on uh, DPS build, which is you know how how the game is working now. So uh, let me show the maximum DPS outputs with the implant. This is the high power call implant, level 45, focused on maximum possible DPS output, at least with my current equipment and things alike. I think I'm, I have some very nice thumbnail material there, so that's going to be nice to edit later. 8.3 thousand with one magnetic field 10,000 DPS, with the second one it is 12,000 DPS, and with the third one 13,525.67 DPS. You know, I'm pretty happy with that, almost the same DPS as my Macario, so uh, I'll take it. Uh, that's decent, that's a decent DPS output, so can't really complain about that. Some some good performance, and basically uh, my Megathor Striker has like 19,000 DPS, I believe, but that's, that ship is built a little bit differently, so, and it has a siege mode, so that's the, the difference. Okay, let me dock, and let me, uh, let me do some more builds for this ship. Now, do you have a lot of different ways on making a glass cannon, although it's not really glass, but technically glass, since doesn't have any it doesn't have a good tank it has a tank but you know it's nothing impressive nothing out of the nothing you know eye eye rising eye nothing uh, eyebrow rising but you can have dual magnetic field stabilizers and technically you can also use one extra adapt adaptive uh, adaptive armor hardener or you can use an armor plate or you can use a combination of dual adaptives and an armor plate there's uh, like a lot of different uh, setups that you can uh, go with. Usually, in my case, from my personal experience, because there are so many terrible builds out there, you don't really need a lot of tank to destroy the average PvP ship or the average PvE ship. Both just die the same way. So, triple magnetic field stabilizers and one adaptive and the damage control. Most like that's the that's the like that's basically what's going to work flawlessly in 99.99% of cases. Of course, doesn't mean that's, that's the best. Uh, against a bait chunk, uh, you might be have a problem because a bait chunk ship is built to to last. So, in the case where you have to fight something with a very high tank, you should bring something that also has a very high tank. Or bring something that can cripple the tank of your target, like a Balgorn or a Blood Raider, or, or a ship that's basically designed for a capacitor warfare. That's one of the ways how you can deal with uh, how you can deal with a very very tanky ship. You know, since the Vinny Hitler doesn't really have any specified shield or armor uh, stats, you can decide if you want shield or, or armor. I, I usually leave the preference on Serpent ships to the player. You can use shield or armor, but never mix. Never do both. Either shield or armor, but never never hybrid. Hybrid sucks. If you saw a build out there with, with a hybrid tank, that's terrible, that's trash. They just don't use a hybrid tank on any ship. I've seen a lot of hybrid tank minicators, unfortunately, and that makes me sad because that, that build, the, the hybrid tanks are just terrible. Don't, don't build like that, it's, it's horrible. Now, the minicator also has some, uh, speaking of tank, that it has some very nice potential to be very tanky. And again, with integrations, you can go with both shield or armor, but never both. So if you want a super strong shield vindicator, you can go, go with integrations for the shield. If you want a super strong armor vindicator, then you go you go with armor rigs. It really wo works both ways really well. There, there are some drawbacks for both, but in the end, you can uh, do a shield or armor super strong vindicator quite easily. It's uh, I tested it, it's, it's working really well. So, which is surprising because some of the other faction ships don't really have this flexibility to choose if they want shield or, or armor. Unless the Balagorn. The Balagorn can do both. The Vindicator and the Balagorn can do both shield or armor. The other one's kind of tricky. And some of them lean towards more armor, some of them lean towards more shield. It really depends on the, on the shipping. And of course, you should pick the ship according to the skills that you have. Don't pick a ship that you don't have skills for because that will be a waste of disc. Now I'll be showing you the the brick, well the brick, the, the integrated tank build, and afterwards I will show you the cheaper option since it doesn't have to be expensive to be effective. There are other builds that you can go with and they work 
nice as well, but the integrations do allow you to basically fuse a lot of different things into one rig, and that's what makes integrations be, uh, I would, I'd say, I wouldn't say really better, because integrations do cost a lot, and there's, go, there's a lot of things to consider when getting integrations, uh, but integrations do give a very nice, I would say, advantage, or a very nice, let's say, bonus over the normal rigs, since you can combine multiple rigs into one, which, you know, can can technically cover the the weakness of the ship quite easily. Of course, at a reduced cost, but at a reduced re effect effectiveness. But you know, you are still covering everything that you can cover with integrations. Now, this is what this will be a classic trunk, I guess. Uh, you can do a lot of different builds. You can even go with a full trunk build with the Vindicator. Basically, re replace the micro warp drive with a capacitor battery or triple uh, triple adaptives. Dual, bat dual repairs in the battery or damage control. There, there's just so many different builds to go with, but armor tanks have the advantage of having a very good capacitor since armor repairs by default don't really use a lot of capacitors, so you can make a silly build like this just work without a problem, and you still have some very nice DPS attached to the ship, so overall, nice DPS and a very nice tank to go along with. Then, of course, you have the implant, which does enhance the the DPS even more, and it also enhances the the weapon, the, the modules with the usage of generators and things like that. So overall, a a multi-purpose multi-purpose in the end, I, I would say. So let's take a look at the tank. 414,000 hit points, 76, 77, 84, and 78. Now, of course, you can do a different integration setup. This is just one of the integrations that I have available on the station here, but you can go with uh, full-on shield, again, full-on armor. You can go with uh, a active armor or active shield approach. You can also go with a more passive approach with added shield, with added shield or armor hit points, or even added, uh, added more shield or armor resistances. Now, uh, for armor, definitely the thermocyclation implant is going to be not really a must-have, but it really does help a lot. If there is an implant that I would say that you should get, it's the thermocyclation implant, especially if you like armor, because this implant is just universally the best. There is, like, no other implant that gives so much with so little investment that it's, it just makes the thermocyclation just so good, and I, I definitely just recommend it if you can get it, because it's a very, very good implant, the, the best implant in the game, if you ask me. Like, I, I, w I spent maybe, like, 5 billion on my own implant, and that's all I had, all I ever needed, honestly. And the extra 20% armor resistance is just fantastic. And let's take a look at the tank. Now, 483,000 hit points, 81, 81, 88, and 82. Well, much better, over 80% now. Can still be better, of course, if I do change the build and the integrations a little bit, but this is already pretty good. Uh, and... Yeah, uh, that's the that's what the thermocyclation implant does. Besides giving tank, it also gives DPS if you want to use it. 1.4 million hit points with the damage total, 94, 94, 96, and 94% resistance, which means that you can last for quite a while with, with this thing. You can even enhance the damage total even more with a general unit. Can get about 96% average with the, with the damage control, so you have like a lot of different ways to enhance the tank even even more. Something that I did on, on my Tempest Navy, I get I got a damage control general unit and that thing just that thing is just a hundred percent resistance by the way. I, I did it. I managed to break the 99 barrier on that thing. Now I said that I'll do something cheaper now since I know that the integrations are expensive and they're definitely not for everyone so it doesn't have to be the integrated way. You can also just use the classic rigs anti one anti kinetic, one anti explosive and the third rig can be well can be an extra auxiliary nano pump, nano both accelerator, or even a trimmer karma pump. It really depends on uh, what you're looking for in the builds. I would just go with extra armor repair speed, and that would be the the way how I would build this ship. Now let's undock and let me show you the active stats of the of the vindicator. Now the vindicator can one v one a lot of ships, but it can't really 1v1 a Balgorn. Now you, you have a specific Balgorn build, Balgorn kill, killer build, 
which does rely on uh, DPS. Basically, you have to kill the Balagorn before the Balagorn caps you. But in that case, if a if you encounter a properly built Balagorn, then and the Balagorn is going to win in in, in like nighttime percent of cases. The Balagorn remains one of the best 1v1 ships, and that's just not that's just something that's not going to be changed that easily. You have specific builds to counter it, but in most cases the Balagorn just wins. That was a well, that was very nice, uh, very nice hit points. Not really much difference to be honest, but integrations do offer a very interesting advantage of mo comp of combining multiple rigs into one. Now, let me go back on a DPS build and let's do something that's going to be useful for PVE. Now recently I've I've started seeing a lot more Serpent ships, a lot more Vindicators, a lot more Galant ships like Megathon Strike and Megathon Navy being used for PvE. They're slowly replacing the Apocalypse Striker, which is very interesting. More and more players are swapping to the Vindicator or the other Megathon ships for the Apocalypse or Apocalypse Navy. Mostly because the AI works really well on these ships. The AI core on the Vindicator, on the Megathon hulls is really nice. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to go and buy these ships. I mean, if you, li if you like lasers, if you enjoy the Apocalypse Striker, Apocalypse Navy, then continue flying them. Uh, it's just something I've noticed. It doesn't have to be... It doesn't. You have to, tra you have to change your ship. You can, you can fly whatever you want to fly. I'm just pointing out something that I've seen and, uh, and uh, what I've heard. Which is very interesting because the, the Apocalypse Striker, Apocalypse Navy kind of classified as the king of PvE, although then 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 there is the Sea and Carrier, which also has very nice DPS and can be flown in high sec and it's a carrier. So very interesting uh, that we have the bell of of the PvE king ships now. Sea and carrier versus Apocalypse versus Apocalypse Navy. Which one do you fly actually? I'm very curious about that. I've been flying all of them. I I've been in all ships. And I don't know, I kinda like all of them. I, I did enjoy the uh, the CN carry a lot. That 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 thing is very la relaxed and fly. It's very easy e easy to get into it honestly. I would say because because of the simplicity the the CN carry might be the, the the one that's kind of more chill to fly, you know. Although the the price tag on that thing is just insane, kind of scary how how much the loss mail costs when you look at it. And this would be the PVE build: quad magnetic fusilleters, dual nosferatus, dual labs, a repair and a afterburner. So uh, let's take this thing out for a ride and let's see how it works. I'm I'm very interested to see how how much the vindicator has been improved. Been a while since I was flying one. I had plans to buy a Vindicator, but unfortunately just never did buy one. Not really sure, not really sure what prevents me from flying one. But I thought about getting one. Still didn't. I have the Megathron Navy. I have some ships that I want to sell, to be honest. I have uh, like four ships that I'm planning to sell, including the Revelation, but uh, no one is buying the Revelation. I already know that. No one, wa no one wants a, a ship that has a bounty on it, so... And I understand that, so I'll just keep the ship in the end. Kind of sad because th 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 that ship is just sitting there doing nothing, and I mean, kind of when you look at it, the the revelation did did already a lot, so it kind of deserves to rest. It did its thing, so that's just that ship is basically a museum. I, I mean, I'm, I'm so happy that I have the revelation. That thing was just amazing. That the most successful ship that I've ever had is the Revelation. Like, literally, the, the, the most successful ship that I've ever had. No other ship go comes even close to what I did with the Revelation. That thing is just insane. I I outdid myself with that ship. Did not really expect it to, to be that effective, but... But I guess put enough work into something and maybe it pays off. Maybe not. It's still kind of luck-dependent in, in the end. Now the the range on the blasters have definitely been improved a lot over over time. I remember when I was flying the Vindicator the first time, I had like 
I think a 5 or 6 km optimal, now it's like 10, 10, 14 optimal, 10, 14 km optimal range. Which is interesting. I don't think uh, that there's going to be any more buffs down the road, so I don't really think that they will buff anything down the road anymore. Maybe some of the weapons that are kind of underperforming, maybe some implants. But I think that's just like we have reached the, the upper ceiling of of the current stats. I, I just have the feeling that the next thing is going to be a big nerf. Like a 25 to 50% nerf. There will be some, I mean, I feel like there's some drastic changes up, up ahead, that's for sure. There's just have that feeling. Especially if we receive young young ships in December. Well, in December, that's, that's what I've heard. So, I don't know. If that's the case, then it's going to be kind of funny. The composers are technically not that bad weapons on some ships. Ironically, some ships that have a bonus on all turrets, small, large, medium, doesn't matter, the composers on these ships surprisingly works really well. I have to actually show you that at one point, because it, it, I, feel, I feel like it's kind of hilarious how, how well the composers work. And there are no implants for the composers yet, although there is one, uh, there is one technically, technically one ship one ca one can you one yeah it was a can you assault logistic or something like that a very weird ship that's the that's the type of ship that I kind of want to get my hands on because it seems to be interesting still kind of waiting for the developers to to return from holiday which should happen Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. I, I think I'll just drop them a message tomorrow. And then we will see what I can do from that from that point. It's kinda interesting when when the developers listen when you're actually not screaming, you know. Like I, I've had a lot of chats with some of them and they actually implanted the things some of the things that 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 I've suggested them. Everything can be solved in a civilized manner, but I guess not all not all, no all players get that, unfortunately. But hey, what can I do about that? Unfortunately, nothing. Just how it is. Now the alpha damage is pretty good. I mean, uh, pretty good might be an understatement. This thing slaps. The Divinicator does have very nice, very nice alpha damage and very nice DPS. It really does slap. Kind of feels like. I mean, in PvP, you know, you might say that this thing is broken, and you know, in a, in a way, it kind of is, to be honest. But one yellow hardener, basically, and it's going to half the, the the DPS. Like, it's going to cripple the DPS coming from the from the Serpent ship because the Redans do kinetic and thermal, and a reactive hardener. Is very good at handling such incoming DPS. It basically just will allocate most of its resistance to to kinetic and trauma, and basically, if you are fighting a proper tank, you are not going to do much damage. And the only way to have a good DPS is basically to have like uh, a glass build. I mean, you, you can have decent DPS, but in that case, tank versus tank, it's not going to do much damage. So. In a again in a situation where you're fighting a very tanky ship, having a tank on your own is uh, definitely the way to go. Because glass builds simply get torn to shreds by any type of DPS. Because you, know, you don't have I mean one adaptive and one damage control is fairly nice to be honest. It does take a lot of damage, but a a, a tank build ship is going to take more damage than you. So they they're just going to be able to tank much more than you. And you are not going to be able to tank a lot of damage. Even if they have low DPS, you are still going to be taking much more damage than they would take. So that's the that's the counter to glass build, basically. A very tanky build versus a glass build, and that's that's something that I would I would like to see more players uh, realize. 
I mean, for store lines and for missions, I again, I am not definitely, I'm de definitely not taking a cruiser. I'm not, not taking a battleship for, for low sec PVE. That's for sure. But because that's just, I'm not taking a battleship for low sec PVE. That's just you know, that's just dumb. Um, I, I'm taking a cruiser or a frigate or a destroyer for low sec PVE for low sec store lines. Battleships are good for high sec and for null sec, but in in low sec, yeah, cruiser all the way for sure. Small ships. Because big ships are big targets, and it's definitely much more difficult to catch a small ship than to catch a big ship. Speaking from my experience, three years of hunting, three or four years of, of PvP, of blowing up ships, and with time you, you, you do learn, I mean, you do realize what works, you do realize what doesn't work, and this is basically just giving me the experience that I can share with you, that's just my goal share my knowledge and share my experience and so i hope to to help other players i mean that's my goal nowadays the the reason why i toned down the pv the pvp much i, I actually did tone, tone down the pvp a lot because i'm now mostly focused on on helping out players because no one else does it no one unfortunately no one else does it so i have to do it for as long as i could of course I still do PvP, but I'm mostly focused on on actually helping out players now. So, my well, not my purpose has my purpose hasn't really shifted. I am still doing what I what I want to do, and I just added more things to do. Basically, adding more things to do it doesn't really. I mean, it does kind of. Yeah, it, it does impact uh, some of the, of the things that I do because time is not unlimited, unfortunately. If the if the day was like forty eight hours long, I would be able to do everything I, that I planned. But unfortunately, the day lasts twenty three seconds, fifty nine seconds, fifty three, uh, fifty uh, twenty three hours, and fifty nine seconds. So yeah. But the DPS on on the Vindicator here is really good. It performs really well. I'm really very happy with the with the ship so far. I can see why players would switch to the uh, to the Vindicator from the Apocalypse. It, it definitely does slap really well. It's a very, I mean, it's it definitely you know something. If you're looking for something different, then definitely try out the Vindicator. If you have skills for it, again, definitely go for it. It's a very interesting ship indeed. It is more engaging if you're close range and brawling the enemies and brawling the ships. Sniping can be fun and relaxing, but. I think with time doing the same thing over and over again can get kind of boring. So, so doing flying a different ship from time to time is definitely something that I recommend that players do because doing the same thing over and over again, even in my case, I mean I did fly a lot of ships and I have the problem where I don't have anything else to fly basically. Uh, I, when you fly everything, I, everything just you know you need you need something different. You need something fresh, and and uh, hopefully, I mean, looking for young young ships for sure. But the Vinikator definitely works really well. A very safe thing to fly ship. Basically, a shotgun, a big big shotgun. That's what the the, the large blasters are. They're big space shotguns. So. That was the Vinicator. Uh, again, very interesting new um, uh, robots on this thing, on all set ships. I have to check if the villain has received something similar. Actually, the villain might be the next one I'll take a look at, because the villain technically should should get the same bonus, but at the same time also should get something else, because the versatile solid ships have been changed besides everything else, besides all, all the other ships. So, very excited to see what the other Serpent ships are now performing like. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.